The IOHK Summit is an annual event. Uh, this is our first annual event. The next year we'll probably do it in Kyoto or some cool place like that. Uh, but we really wanted to do it somewhere fun for the first year, so we decided to come here to Miami. It's a beautiful, warm, sunny day. Uh, the weather is always nice. The beaches are beautiful. And uh, we're having quite a bit of fun. The purpose of the summit is kind of twofold. One is to bring the entire company together. So all of our scientists, our engineers, our designers, our business professionals, uh, as well as members of the media, and, and have a discussion about what is the company working on. Uh, and when you run a distributed company, especially one like ours, which is in more than 15 countries, then you end up getting a bit siloed over time. So it's nice to bring everybody together because it breaks those silos and allows people to build bonds, friendships, and communication patterns that didn't exist previously. Uh, the other purpose is to try to invite the general public and have them uh, basically form a window into who we are as a company, our culture, uh, the types of projects we work on, the products we're building, uh, and also to allow the general public to get a better understanding of our philosophy as a company. Uh, previously we had um, company summits where it was just internal summits. We had one in Corfu, we had one in Malta, that's when I joined, um, Lisbon as well. But this year we decided to actually hold a company event in tandem with this internal summit. Um, having a company event like that or an external event like that is, you know, it comes with its own challenges. But what we wanted to do was showcase all of the different technologies and all the people working on various things inside the company. We wanted to showcase that to the world. Uh, and the timing of the summit really kind of worked out interesting. We're just a, a short time away from having a live test net where we'll be showing for the first time proof of stake decentralized with, with stake pools and delegation, which isn't only a big milestone for Cardano, it's a huge milestone for the industry. This has never been done before. So previously we've been going through a lot of good research, a lot of scientific background, and now we need to put that into actual reality. And that comes with a lot of, lot of challenges. And we're at the point in time now where the development's progressed to quite a, a good point in time. Uh, we've caught up a lot, we've improved a lot. And now we're going to be shifting focus to actually getting things like delegation incentives, which include stake pools, peer-to-peer -peer networking, etc., you know, through its core development into the test environment and then onto an actual test now. One of the best things about Cardano is its research focus and its formal methods focus, but that also sets us up for the biggest challenge with Cardano, is to make the transition out of the research time, out of the theoretical, into the rubber meets the road and actual real product. And so we've been a cryptocurrency for a while, but we haven't been our ultimate vision. We've, we, the, the vision was always to be a decentralized application platform so that you can build other cryptocurrencies on it, so that you can build any kind of application on it. And so this is where we're starting to be. We're, 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 we're introducing development languages that will run on Cardano in Plutus, based in Haskell. And so we're introducing a development environments. We're, we're introducing a full platform that you can build any kind of decentralized application on. And so this is really the vision of Cardano. This is, this is what gets us where we need to go. This is actually delivering the value. As usual with these projects, you have the balance of you know, quality. What's the definition we've done? versus what can we get out as a minimum. And so right now we're navigating those challenges, working with the teams, trying to find out what those trade-offs are. We've got some new people into the team. We've got David Esser, who's the product manager, who's really gonna put a good bit of focus on user-centric features. And we'll be able to have a much more smoother flow of information between what's actually happening, what needs to happen, what the community's asking for, and what we actually produce. What's so exciting about this is that there really, to my knowledge, isn't any other project trying to solve all of the important problems at once, which are, okay, it needs to be decentralized with a reasonable transaction volume, it needs to have sufficient performance, it needs to have governance so that it can be sustained over the long term and we know where it goes long after the current, you know, those of us are gone. It needs to have a treasury so that, so that there's funds to support it over time. Uh, uh, it needs all of these foundations and so there are other very exciting projects with very smart people who we admire a lot tackling pieces of those but Cardano is the only one to go after all of it at once. We're not just showcasing our products this year, this year we actually get a chance to invite some of our students that we just trained um, from Ethiopia. It's special for them, it's special for us. They actually get to come here, they get to meet the teams that they're going to be working with. The first time that we brought the company together was in Corfu, Greece. 
Uh, it, we're very small. I think we're about a dozen people, maybe two dozen people. You could fit everybody in one pitcher, and we were still following the two pizza rule. You could feed everybody with two pizzas. Uh, and then uh, after that, we went to Malta and Latvia, and the company doubled each time. And then uh, we went to Portugal, and in Portugal, I said, wow, we're well over 100 plus people. This is pretty amazing. We're almost filling an entire hotel. Uh, and now here in, uh, in Miami, we have well over 200 people just from IOHK. And not everybody could make it because some people couldn't get visas. So we've certainly grown as a company and uh, we continue to grow as a company and it's real exciting. It changes obviously the company dynamic. So as you grow, you know, you have to be very careful of trying to retain your culture, trying to make sure that you have the proper processes in place to make sure that you don't lose any of that sort of special element that you had when you were a smaller company. And honestly, I think we have done really, really well retaining that culture. I mean, it's about 200 people now. Everyone is really nice, really friendly, really helpful, and wicked freaking smart. And it's just really, really fun. It's exciting to work with people like that. You can get in a room and work miracles in a short period of time. And you can call up anyone in the company and, and away we go. Hey, can we talk about this, this, and this, and this, and come together and solution and problem and next steps and everyone's on board and everyone's so good at what they're doing. It's just fun, it's exciting. It's like being able to step on the accelerator of a super fast car, it just goes. What's really personally humbling about the experience of watching a company grow, going from two people to over 200 people, is that uh, you get to watch people's lives change. Uh, people have gotten married, people have had children, uh, people have developed totally new and different perspectives on how the world works. Uh, some people had never really traveled outside of their home country and now have gone to dozens of countries, in some cases throughout Africa and throughout Asia, and they've been able to meet people they never would have met throughout their career. Uh, and that's a really humbling experience to see that. It almost feels like being a parent of a very large family and to watch all of your kids grow up and go to college and go and accomplish and do great things. Uh, some good people have left and some good people have joined. It uh, reminds me of an old saying from Shakespeare, which is, all the world is a stage and it's people characters. They have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many roles. And we certainly played many roles throughout the history of the company.